good in the back? All right, questions for Kenny? First one will be Chris Nia. We got the microphone. We got to wait a second. Uh, in person press conferences, <laughs> problems. Heard you had to wear pants today. I did. Um, <laughs> can you just talk about the offense and how they developed throughout the preseason, the growth that you saw from throughout the quarterback room and the other positions coming together and them joining as a unit as one? Well, one of the first meeting we had uh, was effort based. You know, when people put on the tape, we wanted to make sure that everybody understands that we're going to give an extreme amount of effort every single time we take the field and that we're going to play smart. And I thought throughout camp, uh, you could see those two things show up, show up. You could see our guys take pride in those two things. And anytime you want to be a good offense, right, you have to be efficient or explosive. Uh, you, can't, you can't lack one or the other. Either you have to be one of the most efficient offenses in the country where you can't bite yourselves in the foot, or you have to be one of the most explosive offenses in the country so where you can overcome those you know, inefficient plays and those negative plays. I think this, this offseason, we've shown a little bit of both. We've shown a little bit of, we've been, become more explosive than we were last year, but on the same token, we're a little more consistent. You know, our guys know what to do. Uh, yeah, we still have false starts. Every team in the country does. We want to have zero, right? That's our goal, but at the same time, you know, we have improved drastically in that category. So those would be the two categories for us um, in terms of quarterback, I think just the understanding of the offense, the understanding of what we're trying to get accomplished. And I know it sounds fundamental, but the understanding of football, like it's four verticals. Why are we running four verticals? What is the scheme behind it that everybody in the country runs? Why is this a play that everybody in the country runs, right? It's just the why do teams play cover three? Why do teams match verticals? Why do teams bring field blitz, boundary blitz? What are the weaknesses, right? The big picture football philosophy for those guys. So when we get into a game week, it's not what play are we installing? It's this is what we're running and this is why because of this, right? We're picking plays from our arsenal. We're not just grab bagging a game plan, so. Hey, Kenny, how you doing? Phenomenal. How are oh, you? Good. I'm doing pretty well. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask you about the uh, preparing for Notre Dame. New defensive coordinator Marcus Freeman comes over from Cincinnati. How much time you spent studying, obviously, Cincinnati tape the last uh, last several months? And then what, what, do you, what are some tendencies maybe you can share with us? What's something that stands out about his defenses? Uh, a lot of tape, to answer that question. Uh, and he's a phenomenal football coach. I mean, there's a reason he was – the most sought out defensive coordinator in the entire nation last year uh, is because he's a phenomenal football coach and he did a phenomenal job at Cincinnati. And what stands out is his guys play super, super hard. They play aggressive, right? They don't let offenses dictate to them. They try to do the dictating to. Uh, and you can, you can hear him talk about that, is he, does, he wants to play defense like offense plays offense. He wants to be the guy that makes the calls. He wants to be the guy that imposes the will. Right. But for us, it, it's not really about them. It's about us. And if we can go out there and we can execute, if we can go out there and we can be efficient, if we can go out there and we can win one on ones in certain situations and we're going to get one on ones. I mean, that's that's what they do. Right. They they win one on ones up front. They force one on ones with their movement and their pops and their pressures in the back end. They give one on ones. So that's going to be the game. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of boring to say, yeah, it's a game of football. It's going to come down to one on ones. But at the end of the day, that is what football is. It comes down to a game of one on ones in the core, in the box, and then the quarterback's trying to find the best one on one possible that gives the best opportunity to be successful. Can you talk about that sort of balance between explosiveness and consistency? When, when you guys are able to win on first down, you just seem to be so much more explosive and dynamic. Does does Jordan have a better understanding and grasp of? of how important it is to win first and second down? Or are you guys at a point now where you're even confident the way he can handle third and long? Yeah, I mean, obviously you want to be in third and short situations. Uh, just statistically amongst all college football, I mean, those are a lot higher conversion rates. So the most important play in a drive is the first play, right? P and 10s, possession and 10, right? That is the most important play. Uh, possession and 10 and plays after big plays. You know, if you can be successful uh, after a big play, 
on a first and ten, and, or you can be successful your first play of a drive. Those are what gets you into a rhythm offensively because both teams come off the sideline with a plan for the first play. The perfect plan. Both coaches feel great about the first call on the first play of each possession. Right? It's what team executes on that first play and what team has success on that first play can really, really affect a drive, like you're saying. And getting off to that good start, right, keeping us out of those bad down and distances uh, is something that we're preaching hard on. And in terms of if we get into a third and long, I do have a, a lot of confidence in our quarterbacks and our offensive line to protect and our wideouts to win one-on-ones and our tight ends to win one-on-ones to go out there and be in a situation where I don't think, oh, we just need to call a screen. We can actually be aggressive, throw the ball downfield, and convert. Last year, you guys, due to a variety of circumstances, had to play a lot of different receivers uh, with varying results. How how much progress has that room made over the last year, and how like what are you excited to see out of them on Sunday? A ton. I mean, a ton of progress. Those guys just come to work. I mean, we've added some players to that mix too that are, that are talented. So when you add a mix to that talent level, it allowed us to kind of shake up where those guys played a little bit. You know, not everybody is the boundary X receiver. Not everybody is suited to be the number one receiver to the field and get pressed every play all game because that's what teams do to number one receivers of the field now they remove them they play press and they say let him beat you right so not everybody's suited for those roles however sometimes that's just the best you have that year to put in those roles i think this year more than last year we've been able to move our guys around uh because we've had you know three players come in that are going to have significant minutes at the wideout position that are going to allow us to move some of those guys around into more natural positions for them into something to where they're not being jammed every snap or something to where they can get free releases and i think that's something for us schematically that we're working on and from our the work in that room they've brought it every day i don't know if there's been i mean we've had a lot of groups that have been consistent but we've there's, there's been an extreme amount of consistency from that wideout group this, this spring and fall camp, specifically this fall camp, that uh, really excites me. Uh, Coach Norvell, I think last night on his TV show, talked about having, I think, eight offensive linemen he thinks that can help the team win games, could be those guys if need be. I guess, where, where is, would you feel about your confidence in that group relative to a year ago? Yeah, a lot more confident. Uh, you know, I, I do think we have eight guys. I think having all those guys back uh, is – is key. I mean, I think that position and that, and that position group, it's about continuity. It's about teamwork. It's about communication. You know, when you, when you talk what makes offenses successful, right, I've, I've said it before and I don't, I don't want to repeat myself, but a big part of being consistent is the offensive line, right? Because those are where the negative plays happen, when guys are on the same plays. Wide receivers very rarely cause a negative play, right? It's up front which causes the negative plays. Right? So when you have a group of people that it may not be the best call, it may not be the best look, but we can get the five guys to block the five guys, and instead of it being second and 13, it is second and 10 or second and nine. Instead of it being first and 15 with a penalty, it is first and 10 still. Right? Those are the situations that I think our offensive line is going to keep us out of is those – TFLs, those big negatives, because I think we're at a lot better, a lot better understanding of what we're trying to get accomplished offensively. I think Coach Atkins has done a phenomenal job teaching those guys the why. Like I said, year one was about teaching verbiage. This year, we've I felt like we've been able to teach football and teach the why we do things, not just what we the verbiage we call inside zone. Everybody has a word they call inside zone, right? In year one, that's what you're teaching. In year two, you're teaching the football. So I'm really happy with those guys, and I do believe we have eight, maybe nine. Not go over here, <laughs> Kenny. With that, uh, that running back room is pretty, uh, pretty full right now. You got DJ Williams transferred in. Trayshawn Ward had a great camp. Obviously, how do you handle the rotation going in? And then once you get into a game, is it basically hot hand, or how, how are you going to handle the, all those guys? We have a, we have a specific plan for how we're going to get those guys touches. You know, you always want to have a, a variety of running backs. You always want to have a bunch of running backs because you don't want one guy to have to carry the ball 30 times, right? That's not good for him. That's not good for the football team. Right? We want to be as fresh as possible going into the fourth quarter. And we want to be able to run the football in the fourth quarter. And by doing that, you've got to play a variety of backs early in the game so you have guys that are fresh when that fourth quarter hits. So we have a specific plan to how we're going to use those guys. And to your, to your token, there is some 
you know, if there's a hot hand, right, you're going to keep feeding the hot hand, right? But at the same time, you know, we've got a, we've got a bunch of guys that I think are going to be very successful and that have the tools necessary to be successful. So I think it's a combination of the hot hand, but at the same time sticking to the plan to make sure we get guys rested and healthy and fresh going into that third and fourth quarter. Hey, Coach, uh, just uh, if you could talk about just the tight end position and just uh, that added depth with Jordan back and just how vital of a role you see that, obviously, playing in the offense this season. Yeah, I mean, that's big. I mean, anybody who watches us knows we get into 12 personnel, we get into 32 personnel, we get into 22 personnel. And having a, a guy like Jordan, who's a veteran, uh, a big put-his-hand-in-the-dirt tight end, uh, along with everybody else in that room coming back once again, that's just an influx of talent into that room. We didn't lose anybody, we just influxed the talent. I don't even know if that's a word, but you know, the way I said it, but it works. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm fired up about him. I mean, that's a guy who, you talk about his story, transferring here, getting hurt, getting a fifth year back, get the COVID year back, and just the, the mentality he's had this last year to get back, you know, that's a dude you can trust when he goes on the field because he's put in the work and he's been determined for, to get to this point. Everything this last year has been for this point, right? For what we're about to do on Sunday. And that's a guy you can, you can have great faith in and great trust because you know the work he's put in every single day to get himself back for this, for this moment. You guys will have a few more days here of practice before Notre Dame. Will you learn anything from your quarterbacks you think here in the next few days that'll change your guys' minds in terms of how you want to utilize your quarterbacks? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, it's just good for our guys to get out there and run a game plan. You know, when you're running your plays and you're play, playing your defense every day, you know, it's a little bit of, you know, monotony to it, right? You know, based off this safety's mannerisms or this linebacker's mannerisms, you kind of have a feel for what's happening when you play your same guys every day. So the game gets super easy in fall camp, in my opinion, right, for those quarterbacks because you're like, oh, he's bluffing. Right? Oh, he's spinning. He's rotating. Oh, they're bringing boundary pressure. Because you're just so used to those guys' mannerisms and, and their alignments, right? When you go into a game week, you've got to be able to translate what you see on the field, right, or what you see in the film room to the field, and you really only have a couple days to do it. So you've got to be so dialed in to what you're looking at on the film that you can take it to the field and be able to apply it quickly. And that dynamic gets even harder when you're game planning for a team that the personnel is not what you're watching. That takes a whole new dynamic when you have a new defense coordinator somewhere because you have to then watch one tape for the scheme, another tape for the players, and then you have to say, okay, what is this guy going to do with these players around this scheme because nobody's just going to carbon copy what they do. Every good coach, and he's a phenomenal defense coordinator, is going to adapt to their talent. So the game within the game week one is how is he going to adapt to what he does and what he's done to the personnel that they have at Notre Dame. All right, last one will be Brendan front row over here. Going back to the offensive line, Kenny, can you discuss the, I guess, the maturity and the experience that both Dylan Gibbons and Devontae Love Taylor have brought to that group? And then secondly, when you're deciding like the right combination, the five of them, uh, do you put, is it like where Dylan Gibbons plays best or is it like more collective for that entire five? Uh, well, obviously th those two, it's, it's huge having guys that have played a lot of football. You know, what people forget is offensive line is such a reactionary position. It's probably more reactionary than any position on the field, O-line and D-line, because you're three inches, four inches away from each other and who you block changes based off of what somebody does that far away from you. One person goes that way, you're up to the backer. One person goes that way, you're down on a double team, like that. So in order to train those movements, right, you need reps. So having that, those veterans and those, those guys who have played snaps and been around a lot of football, right, is huge going back to not taking TFLs, being able to handle movements because they've seen the movements full speed so much. They've seen such variety of movements. What they've seen is not something that's, oh, I've never seen that yet. Or I haven't seen that at that speed. Because you can't always replicate movements, you know, with in practice at the speed you're going to see them in a game. But those guys that have played games, those guys that have, that have been around football for a long time, 
they're, they're used to those fast, quick twitchy movements and what is their initial reaction? Because that's the key, you can't think. You've gotta react to the movement, right? You can think pre-snap based off what you think they're gonna do based off a of film study, but at the end of the day, you're gonna have to react to the movement that they make. Uh, and then in terms of us up front, like I said, I just think, I think Coach Atkins has done a phenomenal job and I'm, I'm, I'm fired up for, for where that group is heading. And we're gonna put the five guys on the field that make the football team best in those five positions. It's not he is the best this or he is the best that, is what is the best combination of the five? What is the best combination of the six or the seven that may, maybe rotate or the eight? Whatever that is, it's gonna be what is the best for the football team, not the best place for the individual player. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. See y'all later.